Welcome to the Power Integrations course, Fixing a Flyback Supply that has Overheating Components. Before starting this course, if your company or customer specifies derating limits on operating temperatures, you should know what these are for each major component on your board. If not, refer to the manufacturer's datasheet for the maximum operating temperature of each component. For your reference, a conservative list of operating temperature guidelines for each major component is shown here and is included in the course notes. These represent worst case conditions measured at highest ambient temperature and minimum and or maximum line voltage. Component temperatures may be derated to meet specific safety requirements or to improve the lifetime of components. For example, the allowable operating temperatures of electrolytic capacitors are a function of the expected lifetime of the component. A 105 degrees C, 2000 hour rated capacitor operated continuously at 70 degrees C will have an expected lifetime of about 20,000 hours. You should have already measured and determined which of these components are violating their maximum operating temperature while running at full load at both minimum and maximum line voltage. In cases where overheating is extremely obvious, such as a smoking resistor, it's not necessary to measure its temperature before resolving the issue. For all other measurements, allow sufficient time for the power supply to reach thermal equilibrium before taking your measurements. In some cases, this may take more than one hour. A good estimate of thermal equilibrium is the point where component temperatures change less than 0.5 degrees Celsius over a 10 minute period. First, verify that your load is not drawing a higher power than is specified for your design. Confirm this by attaching an electronic load set to draw the total average output power specified by PI Expert. If the overheating problem goes away, characterize your load and redesign your power supply in PI Expert. For example, here is the load characterization for an inkjet printer. Although the static load it requires is only 22 watts, the average power, when including transients, is 31 watts, with peaks up to 100 watts. If this printer was connected to a 22 watt power supply, the supply would overheat during use. If your clamp is overheating, this can be indicative of design problems. Please see the course notes for the correct process to diagnose this problem. If any of the following components are overheating in your design, output diode, transformer, input inductor or common mode choke, bridge rectifier, input capacitor, or the power integrations device, then measure the efficiency of your power supply before continuing. If the efficiency is lower than the target entered in PI Expert by 5% or more, then losses are higher than expected in your circuit. Power loss in a flyback supply is converted to heat and can explain why some components are overheating. Resolve this issue before continuing. If the measured efficiency matches within 5% of the target, please continue through this course to resolve the issue. If your transformer is overheating, this can indicate other problems. You'll need to debug your transformer design to address this issue. Please refer to the course notes for more information. Here are all the overheating components covered in this course. You can jump to the specific component that's overheating in your design from the chapter list or continue through the course in its entirety. Input Inductor or Common Mode Choke If the input common mode choke is overheating, first verify that it's not located physically close to a component that runs at a very high temperature, such as a thermistor. If it is, you'll need to relay out your board to move the high temperature component away from the common mode choke. If the inductor itself is overheating, this is caused by power dissipated through the series resistance of the inductor winding. To reduce the power dissipation, replace it with an inductor rated for a higher current. This will increase the wire diameter and reduce its series resistance. Bridge Rectifier The power loss in a diode bridge rectifier is equal to the average input current multiplied by the worst case forward voltage drop of two diodes which is about 1.8 volts. Selecting diodes with a larger current rating will reduce the resistive losses and lower component temperatures. For designs with an output power more than approximately 30 to 40 watts, it may become necessary to select a packaged bridge rectifier that can be attached to a heatsink. 
Input Capacitor. Heat in an electrolytic capacitor is generated by ripple current flowing through its equivalent series resistance, or ESR. If your design uses full wave rectification, first check that none of the diodes in your bridge have failed. A diode which has failed open circuit will convert the bridge to a half wave rectifier. This will significantly increase the ripple current through the input capacitor. Next, verify that the ripple current rating of your capacitor meets or exceeds the actual RMS ripple current flowing through the capacitor. The RMS ripple current into an input capacitor can be found in one of two ways. The first and most straightforward way is to insert a current loop between the capacitor and the board as shown and measure the total RMS current flowing into and out of the capacitor using an oscilloscope and a current probe. Make sure to set the RMS and averaging time periods of your scope to measure one complete cycle. Alternatively, the RMS ripple current can be approximated using the equation shown here. In this equation, Tb is the total time of one capacitor charge discharge cycle, which is equal to one half the line voltage period for full wave rectified designs. Vbv is the lowest voltage seen on the DC bus and is equal to the value Vmin calculated by a PI expert for the specified input capacitor value. VBP is the peak voltage seen on the DC bus and is equal to the VAC min specified in PI expert times square root 2. TC is the conduction time for the diode bridge rectifier as specified in PI expert. ICHP and IDCHAV are the peak charging and average discharging currents of the bulk capacitor, respectively. They can both be calculated by the equations given. Finally, DS represents the duty cycle of the switching MOSFET. For a basic approximation, we'll use the average duty cycle of the supply. Because the diode bridge conduction time is relatively small, we can assume that the average DC bus voltage is equal to Vmin plus one half the total ripple voltage. From here, we can calculate D average by rearranging the transfer function for a flyback supply. If the capacitor is rated correctly, then either increase the value of the capacitor or use two capacitors in parallel, both of which will lower the effect of ESR. Alternatively, select a capacitor from a different series which has the same value but a lower ESR. If you change the value of the input bulk capacitor, you should iterate your design in PI Expert with the new value. Metal Oxide Varistor Metal oxide varistors, or MOVs, are used to clamp differential line surges. If your design uses a MOV, verify that its voltage rating is above the maximum AC input line voltage. Typical MOV voltages for universal input power supplies are 275 or 320 volts. Over many surge events, the MOV will degrade, reducing its voltage rating and resulting in increased dissipation. Or, if the MOV hasn't been subjected to many line surges, it's possible that the component is defective. In all cases, if the voltage rating is correct and the MOV is running hot, replace it with a new component. Output Capacitor Heat in an electrolytic capacitor is generated by ripple current flowing through its equivalent series resistance, or ESR. First, verify that the ripple current rating of your capacitor meets or exceeds the value specified by PI Expert. This can be found under the Design Results tab in the Output Capacitor RMS Ripple Current field. If the capacitor is rated correctly, then reduce its dissipation by selecting a capacitor with a lower ESR or by placing multiple capacitors in parallel to reduce the total ESR. When using multiple output capacitors in parallel on a single output, verify that the PCB layout trace lengths to each capacitor are equal to ensure that the ripple current is equally shared between all capacitors. If it's not, one of the capacitors will run hotter than the rest and you'll need to relay out your board. Output Current Sense The power dissipated in an output current sense resistor is equal to V squared divided by R where V is the sense voltage and R is the sense resistor value. The sense voltage is typically 0.3 to 0.7 volts for transistor-based sensing or 50 to 100 millivolts for op-amp-based circuits. If the resistor is not sufficiently oversized above the dissipated power, it will get extremely hot. 
The power rating of a resistor is typically specified for a surface temperature of 70 degrees Celsius. Operating a resistor above this temperature can significantly shorten its lifespan. To reduce the resistor's temperature, consider mounting it vertically on the PCB if you haven't done so already. This will allow increased airflow around the resistor and increased lead length to help dissipate heat. Alternatively, consider using a resistor with a higher power rating. The other solution is to decrease the amount of power dissipated in the resistor. There are two ways to reduce the power dissipated by a current sense resistor. Either divide the power between multiple resistors in parallel, or, if using a transistor-based sensing circuit, reduce the voltage drop across the resistor by changing the circuit to an op-amp-based design. Output diode. Output diodes are typically one of the hottest components on the board, and it's normal to measure a 50 degrees C rise above ambient, even with an external heatsink. If the output diode temperature is still too high, first confirm that the type and rating of the diode you're using is correct as specified by PI Expert. Flyback converters should use only ultra-fast recovery or Schottky diodes as output rectifiers. Standard recovery rectifier diodes should never be used. If your fast or ultra-fast recovery diode is overheating and the peak inverse voltage across the diode is low enough to allow a Schottky type to be used, then replacing it with a similarly rated Schottky will reduce the temperature. The peak inverse voltage across your output diode can be found under the Design Results tab in PI Expert. Adding another similarly rated diode in parallel with your existing diode will also lower its temperature. Using a diode with a larger current rating, and therefore less resistance, may also provide some improvement. If the diode is the correct size and type, then greater heat sinking must be used. For TO220 package diodes, using thermal compound or a thermal pad will decrease the thermal resistance between the case and the heat sink. However, when using thermal grease, be careful to minimize the thickness of the layer. A thick layer will reduce heat transfer between the surfaces and increase the temperature of the device. Also ensure that the device is coplanar along the entire heatsink surface. Avoid over-torquing the mounting screw, as this may cause the package to separate from the heatsink. Alternatively, select a larger heatsink to reduce the temperature. For axial diodes, you'll need to increase the copper area on the PCB at the cathode pad of the diode. When using 1 ounce copper clad boards, increasing the copper depth to 2 ounces will also reduce the temperatures of axial diodes that use PCB heat sinking. Power Integrations Device If the power integrations device is operating too hot or entering thermal shutdown, you should increase the amount of heat sinking in your design. If using a dip or surface mount package device, relay out your board to maximize the copper area of the source plane. This is the primary heat sinking mechanism of the device. When using one ounce copper clad boards, increasing the copper depth to two ounces will reduce the temperatures of every component that uses PCB heat sinking, including the power integrations device. If you still can't dissipate enough heat through the source plane on the board, then consider either switching to a package type that allows for external heat sinking or select the next larger power integrations device. The lower RDS on of this device will reduce conduction losses and lower the device temperature. Note that some power integrations device families allow the internal current limit to be programmed so that a larger device can be used without redesigning your board. When attaching a power integrations device to an external heatsink, Use thermal grease to decrease the thermal resistance between the case and heat sink. However, when using thermal grease, be careful to minimize the thickness of the layer. A thick layer will reduce heat transfer between the surfaces and increase the device temperature. Also ensure that the device is coplanar along the entire heat sink surface. For TO220 packages, avoid over torquing the mounting screw as this may cause the package to separate from the heat sink. Thermistor. Input inrush thermistors are designed to run hot. It's common to measure a 100 degrees Celsius rise above ambient during normal operation. Their resistance decreases with increasing temperature, presenting a high impedance when cold to limit inrush current and decreasing rapidly as they heat up to prevent excessive dissipation. 
Make sure the thermistor current rating matches the average diode bridge current found under the Design Results tab in PI Expert. Input Fusible Resistor Because input fusible resistors are dissipative, they should only be used in designs with an output power below approximately 10 watts. If your design delivers more power than this, replace the fusible resistor with a fuse. If your design is less than 10 watts, verify that the value of the fusible resistor fitted on your board matches that specified by your design. Simply reducing the value of the resistor to lower its dissipation and temperature is not recommended. This can lead to catastrophic failure due to the higher inrush currents when AC is first applied. Thank you for attending the course, Fixing a Flyback Supply that has overheating components. If you have any comments or questions, please email PIUniversity at powerant.com.